Hello, everyone. I am Kimberly Joy, and I thank you for tuning into the Kimberly Joy Show. And Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this beautiful day you blessed us to see. I thank you for this broadcast and for every listener. And I thank you, God, for meeting each and every one of their, of their needs, God, of their desires, God, in the name of Jesus. And thank you, God, for speaking to us through your word right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have an announcement. Our church, Power and Faith Ministries, we are having a dedication for our new church facility on Sunday, August 2nd at 5 p.m. The address is 8120 Hamilton Avenue at the Hilltop Plaza in Mount Healthy, zip code 45231. The theme for this special service is Building in a Pandemic. And our guest speaker is Bishop George Evans. So if you're not doing anything, please join us again on Sunday, August 2nd at 5 p.m. And we thank you in advance. I would like to read a passage to you. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child, your sins are forgiven. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, Why do you question this in your hearts? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out. Now this passage I just read can be found in Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, why didn't Jesus just heal the man? I mean, that's why he came there, to simply be healed. Well, as Jesus said, he wanted to show them that he also has the power to forgive sin, to prove that he is also God. But personally speaking, I also believe that Jesus first forgave his sins to show us the order of importance. What is important, huh? What do we all need more than anything? We all need to be forgiven of our sins. Yes, so that we won't suffer for eternity. But instead, we will be able to go to heaven to live with our father forever once we leave this earth. Now, that's more important than being able to walk. Matthew 5 verses 29 and 30 say, If your eye causes you to lust, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Now, Jesus didn't mean for us to literally gouge out our eyes or cut off our hands. It's a figure of speech that he was using to emphasize that being free from sin and, and being right with God is most important. So in the passage I read, Jesus first dealt with the man's soul. Yeah, it would help for him to be able to walk. I'm sure not being able to walk limited him from doing a lot of things. See, today, more accommodations are now made for those who are physically, physically disabled, unlike back then. So again, being able to walk was going to affect this man's life in a tremendous way. However, despite all that, Jesus was showing us that being saved, being spiritually healed first is of utmost importance. Mark 8 and 36 says, For what shall it profit a man? if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. In other words, what is the benefit of having wealth, of having health, of, of being able to walk, if you still wind up spending eternity in hell? Yes, Jesus can heal us. Yes, Jesus can give us what we need. But he wants us to be saved or to be set free, free from our sins first. 
See, once we are saved, then our needs will be met, huh? our physical needs, our natural needs. Then healing comes. Then deliverance comes. When Jesus began his earthly ministry, he declared to the people to repent for the kingdom is at hand. The kingdom is God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, God reigning and ruling in our lives. So Jesus was preaching to the people. God is ready to rule and reign in your lives. God has a better life for you, but you have to repent. And to repent is to turn away from your sins. See, Isaiah 59 and 2 says that sin keeps us separated from God. So in order to submit to God, to submit to his will, we have to first turn away from our sins. No, you don't have to be perfect when you come to God. You can come to him as you are. But you have to be ready and willing to walk away from your old life. So when we repent, Romans 10 and 9 says that we then must confess and believe that Jesus died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. Once we believe and confess that, then Jesus brings us into a right relationship with God the Father. So again, Jesus preached repentance and we as his followers are to do the same. We are to let others know that they don't have to remain in their sins. No, that there is a better life, a better way of living. And it is through Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. I want to thank you for listening to today's broadcast. If you're ready to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried. And I believe you rose again so I can be free. Please forgive me for my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord. I am now saved. I encourage you to attend a good Bible-believing church. You are welcome to our church, Power and Faith Ministries with Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks. We are now at 8120 Hamilton Avenue at the Hilltop Plaza in Mount Healthy. Sunday service, 10 a.m., Wednesday Bible study, 7 p.m. And now, here is my cousin, Francine Illy Murphy of Miami, Florida, a woman who has sung in places like Paris, France. Here she is singing an original, I Repent. <laughs> 